So we've looked at calculating tangents of circles and relations between circles and lines. What we're going to do here is I'm going to talk you through how we can look at the relationship between two different circles within the same geometric space. So two different circles plotted on the same set of axes within the same graph and how they can relate to each other and the different ways that this can be proven and shown. Now, if we think about a space where we've got two circles drawn, so let's take one like this, and we look at how the circles can relate to each other, where there are several different options about how they can relate to one another, how they look next to each other, and how they interact with each other. Now, if we take this little circle here, the first thing we can look at is imagine that the circle moves anywhere outside the bigger circle. So there's no points touching it, it's got no contact. This can be one of the possible scenarios that could be there. If we move it slightly closer, what we can see is we can get to a point where the two circles touch a single point, and this can occur anywhere around the edge of the circle. So I can move this little circle anywhere in the geometric space, and it does that. If I then move it in a little bit further, so let's imagine I'm touching at one point, and I move it in a little bit further, well, the circle now crosses the other circle, and what happens is we get two points of intersection between the circles, and this can be anywhere. I can move it as far in and out as I want, and it shows the exact same pattern. Two different points where the circles intersect. If I keep going and keep moving the circle in, what happens is those two points get closer and closer and closer until eventually the circle's on the inside and touches at one point on the inside of the circle. Now again, this could be anywhere around, so I could have it here, I could have it around and up here, Either way, it touches at a singular point on the inside of the circle, and the whole of that circle lies within it. The other one is if I then keep moving, and I've got the circle enclosed completely in the outside circle with no points of intersection. So it's somewhere in this space here. Now, these are five different options that could occur in terms of the two circles being related to each other. But we have to somehow be able to show each of these. And the key things we need to know in terms of being able to do this are the two center points of the circles, the radius of both circles, and the distance between these two center points there. Now, we have to be able to calculate it. Now, if you think the distance, let's call it D, between the two points, if we call one of the centers x1, y1, and we call the second one x2, y2, You'll remember that the distance between any two points in a geometric space, think back to straight lines, is given by the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. And that's the distance formula we have to use here. We have to make sure that we know the centers of each of these two points and then work it through there. And there's a relationship between this distance between them and the two radii that lets me pick any of these five scenarios that we were looking at there. Let me show you how. Now imagine I've got two circles, and like the first scenario said, there's no points of intersection between the two circles. So my smaller circle, I'm going to say, has a radius r1. The second circle has a radius of r2. Now if I've got no points of intersection between the two circles, it's somewhere out here in this space. If I look at calculating D, which is the distance between the two center points here, what I'll find is that distance there is bigger than the radius of both circles added together. So if I've got D is bigger than R1 plus R2, what that means is I've got two circles somewhere in this geometric space which don't touch each other at all. So there's not even a single point of contact between these two circles. If I then take the outer circle and move it closer, so that it touches the inner circle at one single point but remains outside it, I have the two circles touching at one singular point and they're both external to each other. If I was to calculate the distance between the two center points here, D, what I would notice, and you can see if you look at the diagram, if I go R2 and then R1, that would be the same as this distance here. So if I calculate the distance between the two center points, D, and it's equal to R2 plus R1, the sum of the two radii, what I'll find is these two circles touch at one point externally and it's this sort of scenario here. I can then continue to move the circle that's on the outside in a bit further so that I've got two points of intersection. So the circles overlap in this way. 
what I can then do is look at the distance between the two centres again and the relationship it has with the radius. Well, before, the distance was equal to the two radii added together. In this case, if I add the two radii together, you'll notice we've got a little bit of an overlap here. What this means is if I imagine drawing the second radius here, its full length, this plus this, so the two radii added together, would be bigger than the distance. So if the d is less than the sum of these two radii, we know we're going to have two points of contact. But if I keep moving this circle so that I've only got one point of contact similarly to this, what I'm going to notice is if I subtract the two radii from each other, as long as this distance is bigger than that as well, I will still have this sort of scenario. So as long as the distance is in this sort of relationship, i.e. between the two radii added together and the two radii subtracted from each other, I'll get this sort of scenario. However, if we go to this scenario, the fourth one, where I've got the two circles together and they touch at one point internally, so they've touched at just this point there, if I take the two radii, the bigger radii I take away the smaller radii, I'll calculate this difference here. And this difference here is going to be equal to the distance between the two points. So this is going to be the distance between the two centres. So if my d is equal to the difference in the two radii, this is the scenario I have. If I move this even a fraction outside the circle, then when I do the big radius take away the smaller radius, I'll have something that's just slightly bigger than that, and it'll still fall into this scenario we've got up here. So it has to lie in this sort of relationship with each other. If I then move this a fraction inward and have the two circles lying inside each other, I then get my final relationship with the distance. What I see in this one is if I've got two circles enclosed with each other with no point of intersection, if I calculate the distance here, it's going to be less than the bigger radii take away the smaller radii. And if that's the case, I know I've got two circles enclosed within each other, no points of intersection. These are the five possible outcomes that can happen when we've got two circles in a space with each other and in some sort of relationship. We have to remember all five of these properties and be able to get them, calculate them and show their relationship to each other. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of this now. Imagine I've got two circles given by these equations. So there's my first circle, there's my second circle and they touch externally and I want to show that. We have to think to ourselves, right, what property does it mean if the two circles touch externally? Well, if we remember this scenario, the two circles touching externally looked like that. It was a single point touching externally. There's my centre of one, there's my centre and radius of the other. The distance between the two centre was equal to the sum of the two radii. So we have to prove that in order to show that these two circles touch externally at a single point. So for both of them, I need to calculate the centre, I need to calculate the radius, and then look at the relationship I want here. So again, just to remind ourselves, we want distance equals R1 plus R2. So let's look at this circle first over here. Now this circle first, remember, we can get the centre C as given by the negative G, negative F. Think back to when we looked at the general equation of a circle. The 6 here is equal to 2G, so my G is equal to 3, which means that for my C, I've got negative 3 in the x, and the 2f was equal to 4, so f is equal to 2, so my negative f for there is equal to negative 2. So there's my centre of my first circle. Now the radius, r, is given by the square root of g squared plus f squared take away c. Now remember, g and f still come from here, and the c comes from this number here at the end. So if we take all of these and substitute them in, I get the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, take away negative 12. Calculating each of these, I get the square root of 9 plus 4 plus 12. Remember, minus minus becomes a plus. 9 plus 4 plus 12 gives me the square root of 25, which is 5. So there's my first radius there. I now do the same sort of thing with this second circle here. So if I take it down, I've got my 2g and my 2f. So my 2g for this one is equal to negative 6, my g is equal to negative 3, my 2f is equal to negative 12, my f is equal to negative 6. So from that I can say, find my centre, again given by negative g, negative f, is at 3, 6. 
I can calculate my radius now using the exact same formula from before of g squared plus f squared minus c. So in this case, I take the square root of g squared, so negative 3 squared, plus my f squared, which is negative 6 squared, take away c, which is minus 20. So 3 squared is 9, plus 6 squared, which is 36, take away 20. 9 plus 36 is 45. 45 take away 20 is 25, so it's the square root of 25, which is 5 again as well. So I've got my two radii, I've got my centre points, I can calculate my distance and see the relationship. Now looking at this, I know I'm going to have to add the two radius together. So what I then say is R1 plus R2 equals 5 plus 5, which is 10. So now I want to calculate the distance between the two centre points, and if I get 10 as well, I've satisfied the condition and know exactly what I'm after. I know to get my distance I do the square root of the x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. So in this case, x1 minus x2 is negative 3 take away 3 squared plus y1 minus y2, negative 2 take away 6 squared. So negative 3 take away 3 is negative 6, so I've got negative 6 squared plus negative 2 take away 6 is negative 8 squared. Negative 6 squared, well that's 6 squared as well, so, so that's 36. Negative 8 squared is the same as 8 squared, which is 64. 36 plus 64 is 100, so it's the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. So from that I can safely say that D equals R1 plus R2, therefore the two circles touch externally at one single point. So the two circles lie outside each other and touch at that one point, purely because it satisfies this relationship here.